Hi, YouTube family. It's Daughter of the Most High. Betty from A Servant's Heart posted um, on her community page today, and I want to share that with you. So um, she posted it 11 hours ago. Um, this is what uh, she says, the war at large and the truth behind it all. This is the beginning of a takeover. Not yet, but coming soon. Many words of the Lord have I heard, but I have been cautioned not to give, not to always give everything, but to look closely at everything. For men's plans, they often go awry. Much has been looked at and said about this war. However, be cautious, for much of what is being said is half-truth, half-lie, some exaggerations. Be wise, says the Lord, in what you hear and believe, many inconsistencies. And I'm just saying here, we know that. There's, what can we even trust these days? Yeah. From here on are the words of the, uh, are the words that the Lord has been giving me. So that was her speaking, everything I just said. And then she says, from here on. Um, so the war is a decoy, a cover up as to what is really behind all of this. The timepiece is Israel. Watch Israel. The timeline is now activating even as we watch. While, while this so-called war is happening, and she says so-called, or that's what the Lord said, while this so-called war is happening, the powers to be are working on a new pandemic. Some will call it e Ebola, and it will kill, and it will bleed, and it is in the making. A harsh lockdown will eventually follow be prepared, for this one will not be as easy to get out of, if at all. Now with this word, wait, now with this next word, I want to give you the backdrop first, and then the word of the Lord will follow. Where we live, there really is not many of these kinds of animals, although, although they are part of the mammal family. But as my husband and I were getting into our vehicle, heading out, don't you know my husband, that's what she says, don't you know, <laughs> is she from Minnesota? Don't you know, my husband saw it first, and then I finally saw it, an armadillo. I could not believe it. Very ugly creature, moving like it knew where it was going, and then it stopped. We blew the horn, and it went right on out like it was on a mission. The Lord's words in regards to this. Coming soon, a new plague. The modern term is Hansen's disease. The Bible calls it leprosy. It is rare, but it will be coming back. It is usually spread by airborne droplets or more. You can look it up. However, the armadillo carries leprosy if it is around too long. Be forewarned, the whole thing is a trap, and this is the end of the word from the Lord. So, leprosy? <laughs> wow. Okay. So, I looked up how to treat leprosy. And it is called Hansen's disease. I didn't know that before today. Um, I'll read a little bit to you. Um, Hansen's disease can be recognized by appearance of patches of skin that may look lighter or darker than normal skin. Sometimes the affected skin areas may be reddish Loss of feelings in these skin patches are common. Um, you may not feel 
a light touch or a prick with a needle. To confirm the diagnosis, your doctor will take a sample of your skin or nerve um, through a skin or nerve biopsy to look for the bacteria under the microscope and may also do tests to rule out other skin diseases. How is the disease treated? It is treated with a combination of antibiotics. Typically, two or three antibiotics are used at the same time. These are, um, I'm not sure how to say this, so I'll spell it. Um, it looks like Dapsone, D-A-P-S-O-N-E, with R-I-F-A-M-P-I-C-I-N. And it looks like Clofazamine, C-L-O-F-A-Z-I-M-I-N-E, is added for some types of the disease. So that sentence said, these are Dapsone with um, Rifampicin or Pisin and Clofazamine is added for some types of, this is multi-drug therapy. This strategy helps prevent the development of antibiotic resistance by the bacteria, which may otherwise occur due to length of treatment. Treatment usually lasts between one and two years. The illness can be cured if treatment is completed as prescribed. If you are treated for Hansen's disease or leprosy, it's important to, um, and it gives a list of things, I won't go into that. I'm actually on the CDC website, so you can look it up here. Um, <clears throat> if left untreated this below this is below the three points if you're being treated for hansen's disease if left untreated the nerve damage can result in paralysis and crippling of hands and feet in very advanced cases the person may have multiple injuries due to lack of sensation and eventually the body may reabsorb the the affected digits over time resulting in the apparent loss of uh toes and fingers. Corneal ulcers or blindness can also occur if facial nerves are affected due to loss of sensation of the cornea uh, of the eye. Other signs of advanced leprosy may also include loss of eyebrows, saddle nose deformity resulting in damage to the navel, navel ah, nasal navel nasal, nose, septum. Um, antibiotics used during the treatment will kill bacteria that cause leprosy. While the treatment can cure the disease and prevent it from getting worse, it does not reverse ner nerve damage or physical disfiguration, of course, that may have occurred before the diagnosis. Thus, it's very important that the disease be diagnosed as early as possible. So... Wow. Okay. So that's from the CDC, how to treat leprosy. You can look it up yourself there. Um, it makes me kind of sad. And I know, mm, sorry, I got something right here. Um, wow. So other people have been saying that, um, that this war, now there are people dying, but it's apparently not as intense as what they're saying, that it's exaggerated, um, what's going on. Um, so it says, while this so-called war is happening, the powers to be are working on a new pandemic. Ah. Uh, some will call it Ebola. It will kill. It will bleed. It is in the making. A harsh lockdown will eventually follow. Be prepared. So, I believe she really hears from the Lord. Uh, she's got quite the powerful walk. Um, hmm. So, that's why they saw 
an armadillo, strange enough, in their yard. Um, and again, it says at the bottom, be forewarned, the whole thing is a trap. That, and that's the end of the word of the Lord. Um, so, again, the only thing that we can do is what we can do. Um, I don't know. I mean, to be honest with you, if this is going to happen, if the, if it happens the way she's saying that they're preparing, you know, this, and then of course they'll let it loose like they did COVID. Um, I want to, I want to move to a rural area before this happens. So that's my new prayer. Um, I don't want to be trapped in my home. Some people, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but they hardly come out of their house. So if they were in lockdown, they'd barely notice, other than maybe going to work. And I'm someone that actually loves to be out in nature. When it's nice out, like in the spring and summer and early fall, I walk my dogs, ride my bike, take out my kayak. I have that inflatable kayak I bought last summer. I mean, that's what, that's my day. Take out my kayak, you know, take out my bike, come home, walk my dogs. I mean, that's how I live every day that I'm able to do that. I'm active and outdoors. And so those of us that prefer to be outdoors the majority of the day on nice days, and even sometimes on the <laughs> colder winter days, um, it's very hard for us to be stuck in the house. Some people live on movies and TV. I don't watch almost anything. I watch YouTube videos. Something like this, a lockdown would be very hard for me. Um, and I worked all through COVID, you know, the last couple years, worked all through COVID. So, um, yeah, I want to go rural. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my plan. And so that's my prayer is Lord, show me, you know, and that's been my prayer anyway, Lord, show me when I should put my townhouse on the market and go. And, um, I want to live in some kind of rural place. Um, I want it to be a little warmer than Minnesota. Minnesota's um, pretty cold in the winter. I don't know how much time, how much longer we have here anyway on earth, I mean. So, but I would like to move a little way south. Um, so, I don't know, but I don't want to be part of this. And I, one of the things in my in my Christian walk, because my son has a physical impairment and he does have a cyst in his brain that I really do have or really have built my faith in the area of healing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I receive like periodically, maybe once a week or so, I'll just raise my hands and just Lord heal anything in my body you never know when cancers are forming or something else. Father, I just receive healing in my body. I, re I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. And I just, I receive healing from the top of my head to my toes. I receive healing and any cancer, any illness, any anything, you know, and I'll say my brain, you know, my, my lungs, my heart, you know, my kidneys, I'll name things. And just receive healing anywhere I need it. And so I encourage you to start practicing that. And just really believe. I mean, I believe God wants us well. And I believe that we, well, it's not even I believe. The Bible says yeah, Jesus went around healing the sick all the time. So we have authority given to us by Jesus um, that we can rebuke demons and sickness and all the works of the enemy. Um, and so just know that we have authority over this. Um, but if they're, you know, and their lockdown isn't so much to, to reduce the spread of it, just like with COVID, it's to control us and manipulate us and to be heavy handed with us and, you know, be prepping for the new world order and all this stuff they've been planning for so long. So 
I just really don't want to live like that. So I, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go. Um, I'll pray to the Lord about where to go. I got to have some freedom. Um, at least if I had like a couple acres or five acres, you know, just so I can get out and walk my dogs and do my thing and be outside and not have, you know, the military, you know, <laughs> they're going to go for the populated areas. And I don't know how, um, it's, this is going in your city, but I can tell you in my city and I live north, about a half hour north of the Twin Cities. The Twin Cities are Minneapolis and St. Paul. St. Paul is our capital. And, um, so I live about a half hour north of Minneapolis, which is not far. It's not far from the main, like metropolitan area. So I'm just in a suburb and, um, so if they were, you know, whatever they're going to do, war, bombs, uh, leprosy, whatever they're going to do, I'm not that far out of that main, heavily, heavily, uh, I can't talk today, heavily populated area. Well, they are putting up apartment buildings all over the place. We are getting so congested here. It's like shocking, you know. I don't think anybody's going to, well, not anybody, but some people aren't going to own a home. When you rent, when you rent, your money is like, you're paying your rent. But what I'm saying is you're not building any equity. You're not, you're, if you rent, you know, for very long, like let's say after high school or after you move out of your, the, you know, your parents' home or whatever, you want to get into a house ASAP so that you can start building equity and get, make your money makes money. So then otherwise, and they're building apartments everywhere. It's like these people are going to be in apartments forever because most of us don't make a whole lot of money. Now it's one thing if you make really good money and you're like, you know, paying 1200 bucks a month for your apartment and you can still save, say five, 600 bucks every month or maybe even a thousand. And then you can get a down payment for a house. You know, that's okay. But the people like me, I've always been check to check. So yeah, but I did buy a house. My first house I bought at 30 and, um, first time home buyer. And, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much I Put down I think it was like five grand or something I was 30 yeah <laughs> but it got me into houses and I've been in houses since so and that was actually from the Lord um, I was renting from my brother he owned a duplex and he was going to sell it and I was like God what am I going to do um, and I did not have a real strong walk back then but I was like God what am I going to do and you know that was one of my audible voices sometimes you hear God in here and sometimes you hear him out here and sometimes you get an impression, but that time it was, you know, I'm saying he spoke like through an angel, buy a house, <laughs> buy a house. I was like, buy a house, me? You know? <laughs> but that's what I did. I bought a house, but a little house. So, and me and my two doggies, I had two schnauzers back then. I had a schnauzer and a schnauzer mix. It was father, daughter, um, Rocky had pups with the dog uh, that was, it was an up-down duplex, and the woman down below actually worked for my brother, and she had a doggy, and so Rocky and Kyrie had pups. I kept one, so yeah, I had father-daughter doggies for um, quite a few years there, and um, so yeah, schnauzer, schnauzer mix. They were the gray kind, salt and pepper, yeah, so yeah. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, I'm not sure what else to say, but I wanted to share this. If you haven't subscribed to A Servant's Heart, I encourage you to do so. That's Betty, and I believe she hears from the Lord. Um, I'm just going to check a few comments. Let me see. I got a minute here. I'm going to check a few comments. Oh, amen, sister. I had a dream from God about people breaking out in this rash with boils like leprosy. It seemed to have, oh, it seemed to affect many children. Amen. The Holy Spirit has shown me many of the same things. God is so good to us. 
bless you all. Oh boy. Here's another one that said she heard from somebody else that leprosy is coming back. So this confirmation is the third time for me to, to hear this. Mm. And then she says, pray, pray Psalm 91 over your families and homes. Yes. And then somebody else. This is the third word I've heard in a week concerning Israel. Of course, Israel's a target. Okay. Yep, just random comments after that. All right, fam, uh, thank you so much, and be blessed. Have a really good week, and I'll see you soon.